everybody. And today we're ditching the foam roller, we're ditching the ball. All you're going to need is a good strong resistance band or a big pillow, a big bath pillow if you've got one. We're working on flexibility only. So we're getting rid of the foam roller, getting rid of the ball, and we're just going to be doing some good static stretches. When we're stretching, it's not a case of bouncing in and out, easing in and out. The purpose of our stretch is we take it to a point in which we find we can't really go any further and we're trying to build on that for the two minutes or whatever we're holding each stretch for. So please don't fart about. Commit to a good stretch, don't commit to a bad stretch. So if you feel you've not quite got a good setup, there's no point committing two minutes to it. Get a good stretch and try to develop your flexibility for those two minutes plus that we're in it. Happy days, let's get the show on the road. We're getting straight down, and we're gonna be starting from the lower body, working our way up. Straight in with a horrible one this morning. I'm gonna show you from side on. We're gonna get onto the knees. We're gonna have our knees, knees just roughly hip to shoulder width apart, with your feet positioned behind the knee, okay? So I've not got my feet in like this. I've got enough room basically to try and get my butt in between my feet, okay? So I don't want to be sitting on my heels. I want to be able to go further if I'm able to. Main setup point with this is the foot itself needs to be pointing. The toes need to be pointing away. And I'm trying to get the top, the bottom of my shin here flush, flush with the floor, okay? And that's where you're going to feel some tightness if there's tightness there. And that's where you're going to struggle with if there's tightness there. But that's exactly what we're going for. We're going to be stretching up the front of the shins this morning. So all I want you to do is sit back down into this stretch slowly, okay? Because it's very uncomfortable for a lot of people. And all I'm doing is just lowering down slowly, slowly, slowly. And the reason I'm going slow is so I can remain relaxed, okay? Because it's a bit of a brute. If you do it often, not so much. But if you don't do it very often, or if this is the first time you're doing this one, you'll probably find it's pretty hellish. Now, what I'm doing, like I say, I'm trying to get the whole shin flush on the ground, especially down at my foot here. But if there's a lot of tightness, that's where you'll get your, you'll be able to get your fingers underneath there. But the end goal is to be able to have it flush. Okay, so I'm trying to get my body weight over equally, both legs, both feet, if you like. And once I feel I'm kind of on top, it's just a case of trying to relax your breathing. Relax the muscle tissue. And just imagine sinking into the ground. Gravity is pulling you towards the ground and you're just sinking into it. Now, like I say, it's pretty uncomfortable. We're not looking for comfort, okay? We shouldn't be experiencing pain, but discomfort, definitely. You're gonna feel a decent level of discomfort as we stretch. Now, what I'm doing here and what you can't see is I'm slowly starting to take more and more weight off my hands, off my arms, and get more of, more of it onto these legs of mine to increase the stretch. And that's what I mean by, right, I'm in a good setup and I'm in a good position, yep. So now I'm going to commit the next two minutes to just trying to take it further, further, and further. We're going to be starting this morning working on the lower, lower, lower body, and working our way up, okay? Attacking the main areas, the big muscle groups, and a lot of the main problem areas a lot of people are lacking flexibility in. So now I'm starting to come back, but of course this is your, you're building on this at your own pace. If you come back like so, and it's that uncomfortable that you're no longer relaxed and you're tensing up and it's all horrible down here, okay, that's defeating the purpose. But again, something to strive for. We're leaning back, and what I want you to do is try to imagine you're leaning back that much that your knees are starting to lift off the ground. Are we happy with that? So we're really lifting those knees up off the ground. You might not be able to, but you're trying to. And by doing that, you're going to be shifting a hell of a lot of weight onto these feet. Okay, the tops of these feet. And this stretch is, like I say, very uncomfortable. <sighs> Good. And I want you, when you're done, to slowly ease out. Now, when you're watching, please watch me. I'm coming out of this slowly, equally. Bringing the weight equally off both legs. Don't lean off to the side. When you come out of this one, this is probably going to be the most uncomfortable part of it, is when you return out of this one. Okay, so I'm going to be coming out nice and slowly. You're going to feel a lot of discomfort in the front of your shins, okay? And all I want you to do is just get up, walk around, and have a wee shake and let that blood flow again in the body, okay? So a good stretch, that one, especially for runners. You'll find a lot of tightness. If you run regular and you don't stretch regular and you don't keep on top of your mobility, you'll find a lot of hellish pain and discomfort. Do it often, okay? Do it often. Right, what we're going to do now is get set up for an ankle stretch. What you're going to need is a wall, ideally. But I'm going to show you on a bench here. Pull this in. So my bench, my bench here is my wall, okay? Don't disappear. Make sure you can see me and you can pay attention to the fine details, okay? 
What I'm trying to do here is stretch out this area here. The ankle joint itself that you hear me go on about that affects your squat so much. How we do that, if you're really tight and lacking the range to lift your toes up, what you'll need to do is lean back away from your wall because what I'm trying to get on, I'm trying to get the ball of my foot, not just the toes, the ball of the foot on the wall. So I need to get my toes pretty high up the wall. From here, I'm going to just simply, what I recommend you do before you commit to this stretch, is just do a few of these, okay? Pushing the knee towards the wall, trying to push it towards in line with the toes, just to try and encourage the stretch a wee bit, because a lot of us will be that tight that when we go to do this, it'll hardly move, okay? If you've got the ball of your foot high up in that wall, and you're pretty tight, and you, you lack a lot of ankle mobility, you'll struggle to bend that knee, so what I recommend, like I say, is just rock back and forward, trying to take it a wee bit further each time, just to try and encourage you to loosen up. And then once you feel that you're moving a little bit, that's when I then want you to push that knee forward as hard as you can. And then with your body, shift it close enough to the wall that when you're pushing into that wall, you're feeling a hell of a stretch. So the purpose of this stretch is to try and continue to push the knee forward more and more and more. And as you look at that knee, you are pushing it towards your toes. Don't let that knee cave in. Again, if things are pretty limited and restricted in the ankle joint, which for a lot of people they are, don't let the, the, the knee start to cove in more. So we're pushing forwards. We're establishing that stretch at the base of the lower leg, right in at the heel, right in at the Achilles area. And we're just trying to take it further and further and further. And we are not easing in and out, okay? The reason for that is you're really not doing much. If you're easing out of this stretch too quickly, you won't be holding it enough to make a change happen, okay? So a very important stretch, a very easy stretch to crack anywhere. And it's a good one to start improving your ankle mobility, but you must, if things are that bad, you're gonna have to use a bit of foam rolling, etc., as well to try and break that tissue off. Stretching alone may not be enough if it's that bad. So get after it, get it done, push that knee forward, Try and take it further and further and further. And this is what I mean by committing to a bad setup. If you feel your foot sliding down the wall, that's a bad setup. Okay, you should feel like your foot is anchored and going nowhere. And what you probably notice now is that trying to do it with your socks on, it ain't gonna work. Good. Taking it further, taking it further for these last 20 seconds now. Take it as far as you can. Okay, really push that knee forward. If you can shift your body weight closer to the wall to get more push into it, go for it. Good, and slowly ease out of that one there, okay? And once again, it's gonna be quite horrible when you walk around, so please just walk around, let the blood flow a few circles with the foot. Just let that feeling come back to it so that pain or discomfort subsides, and then get stuck into the next side. Again, if you're not sure, watch me. If I'm really restricted on my ankle mobility, I'm gonna to struggle to lift my toes up. Therefore, I'm gonna to need to really lean back to get those, the ball of the foot, sorry, the toes and the ball of the foot on the wall. Test and adjust quickly. Push my foot hard into the wall. Does it slide? Yes. Okay, you got a bad setup, fix it. Okay, is it not quite feeling so, so secure? Then fix it, okay? If it feels like it's wedged and anchored there, good. Once again, if things are feeling pretty tight, or even if I'm not, I encourage you that you just push the knee forward, release, rock the knee forwards and backwards just to try to just get rid of that initial stiffness to let you get into a better stretch quicker. So I would say do maybe a bit five of them, just pushing the knee forward and then back, pushing the knee forward a little bit further and back and then establish that stretch. From there, push the knee forwards in line with the toes and still focus on your breathing. That breathing is gonna help that muscle tissue relax because like I say, it's uncomfortable. Your body's tensing and, and contracting this muscle tissue here stop you going any further because it thinks that if you go further you're going to damage yourself okay now we've got a lot more range to play with here but we need to encourage your brain to feel free to do so and that's what we're doing and that's why we must hold the stretch and not ease in and out because if you ease out you're letting your brain win that argument as always with the stretching discomfort yes you're going to feel that stretch it's going to feel pretty uncomfortable but pain we should not be getting pain be wary of that. You should not be hurting yourself when you're stretching. As always, it's about what you put into this. What you put into this is what you're going to get out of it. If you're just holding a half-hour stretch here, looking around your living room with your hands and your hips, yep, 
probably not going to get much out of this. But if you're trying to proactively take it further and further and further, good. You pass it. You're going to get better. Once again, really try and focus these last 20 seconds. Push it as far as you can. Make sure that knee is not caving inwards. Make sure it's pushing forward towards the toes, which again, if things are really tight, will be difficult. So very important to stretch this one. Very important one because your ankles being tight is affecting your squats massively, massively. And for such a simple stretch, and for such a simple way to get more mobility and flexibility back into those ankles, the amount of people that don't do it is just baffles me. It just baffles me. If I had a terrible squat and I knew it, then I knew that all I needed to do was a little bit of stretching and foam rolling for a couple minutes each day to get me better pretty damn quick. I would do it without hesitation. Right, relax there, everybody. Right, okay. So we've done the low, lower leg. Now, very quickly, it might be worth mentioning, we're focusing that stretch there on the ankles. Down here. Okay, you can do the exact same stretch, but with your knee locked out. So obviously we're pushing the knee forward to emphasize the stretch down here. You can do the exact same stretch with your knee locked out to hit up higher up in the calf. So again, if the whole area is just feeling stiff, work on both. Okay, work on both because it's going to benefit both areas. Right, next up, we're going to be getting into the hamstrings and we're going for the classic hamstring stretch. So you're going to need, if you've got one, the thickest band you have or a beach towel size I don't know, yeah, a beach towel, a long enough towel, something about this length, okay? Don't be picking a wee hand towel, because that's just going to make your brain really, really, really. So we're moving up into the big, big muscles higher up, starting to work towards the hips now, again, where we get a lot of tightness. Classic stretch, common stretch, but one of the best ways to stretch the hamstrings for most of us who don't have a lot of equipment, etc. It's a pretty simple stretch, but it's a great way, like I say, to target the hamstrings alone. Hook your band or your towel around the ball of your foot once again, not the toes. And before you get into it, pull on that band and that foot should come with you, okay? That's the whole point in this. You're trying to use the band to pull that foot to help lengthen everything out here. So if you're in the stretch and you start pushing into that band and fighting that band, you're defeating the whole purpose, okay? And that's something that can happen automatically. As soon as you start to encounter resistance, the first thing you do is start pushing against it. So make sure in this stretch, you're fully relaxed and this band is pulling those toes towards you. Right, okay, from here, I'm going to lie back and just come out of the stretch a wee bit. So I want you to find a place where you're pretty comfortable, there's not too much stretch. Because what I want you to do first and foremost is set up in a good, comfortable position. Shoulder blades pulled together, the upper body's nice and relaxed, good form, good posture, relax is the key word. Other leg that we're not stretching, complete dead weight, knee on the ground, not lifted up. From here, I'm going to reach up if I've got a resistance band and try and get a good, good bit of resistance on this band, a good pull. Now I'm going to start moving my straight leg up, 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 until I hit that point where it's like, oh, that's a hell of a stretch, okay? But remember, we must relax. So don't take it to the point where you're shaking. You have to be relaxed. And then we take it a wee bit further, okay? So this is all we're just about gaining centimetre after centimetre over the space of seconds. Take it a wee bit further, keep the knee locked out. Enhancing the stretch. Try to keep the upper body relaxed. Of course your arms might start getting tired because you're pulling on this band. If you do, you can, you can hold the band in one arm or whatever, but don't ease out of it, okay? Realise that it's not for long. It's to get on with it. You're this side, you're this side. Taking it further. Now, as we start to take it further, what we need to be conscious of is that we don't start letting the knee bend to allow us to take it further. A lot of people let the knee bend sometimes without realizing it, okay? So make sure you're really pushing that knee away from you and pulling, pulling those toes towards you. And that foot is relaxed here, okay? Really relaxed. Get the best pull on that band that you can. Take it further, take it further, take it further. And remember, as you're doing this, if you know you could probably take it further, but it's pretty uncomfortable and you're not, then you're really missing out on a good opportunity to get better. Get out, get your feet in. Simple as that with this stuff. There's no lying, there's no hiding from mobility and flexibility. Trust me. When I tell people to go away from here and work on this or work on that and they come back in and tell me they've done it, 
It doesn't matter what they say to you, be true to me and do if they've done it or not. When they start moving around in three exercises, the mobility flexibility, if he's not lying, he's not been doing it like he should. Taking it further, taking it further, taking it further. At this point now, you should feel that you can't really go any further. You're at absolute max strength. Doesn't feel nice, but we're staying relaxed despite the discomfort and these hamstrings are stretching again. Then we're going to ease out slowly, ease out slowly, sitting back up, okay, have a quick breather, and then two blood down your legs. So a simple stretch, great way to stretch out the hamstrings. There's a few different variations we can do to make this even better, but again, for the home athlete is what we'll call you. Okay, people at home where you can keep it to what you can use around you. Most of us have got a resistance band. Okay. So from here, what I want to do is start getting people to anchor the resistance band because then I'll see people door handles flying off and breaking stuff. So we're keeping it simple, but simple is effective in this case. There's a few variations we can do of this. But Remember, start at the point where it feels manageable, get your body in a good position, then get a good pull on this band, make sure that your feet aren't fighting this band, your toes are being pulled towards you, and then start increasing that stretch. Start increasing that stretch, get the job done. Right, our goals would be room for improvement. Don't be put off, same way you might be put off when you do a circuit class for the first time, when you do a, a gym session for the first time, you're put off by how much you struggle with something. Okay, a lot of people are put off by that, oh I found that horrendous, oh I'm looking back to that, oh, I was awful, I'm no good. Same with this stuff, a lot of people don't do flexibility and mobility work because they're bad at it. People don't like doing things they're bad at, it highlights their faults, we don't like that. But realize that just like anything it's going to be, it's going to be difficult when you start but very quickly you're going to get the improvement so if you have legs are way down here and you can barely move that's fine okay each time you do it it's going to slowly start to increase if you're doing it properly of course it's not just a case of turning up to a class and your mobility is going to get better just from attending you must put in the work and hopefully right now as you're following along you know in your head, yep, I'm putting in the work here. Okay, this is pretty uncomfortable and I don't feel I can go any further. Good, and relax out of that one, everyone. Fantastic. So like I say, we're starting to come up to the hips. So these big muscle groups that we're attacking now, this would fall under the hip area, even though it's the legs, okay? Because they tie into the hips and what they will feel. We, 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 ref, we reference them tighten to the hips, or real tight around the lower back, or, or a real stiff around the hip, groin area, okay? All these areas that we refer to as working around the hips are going to help make things feel a little bit better in that area. Now what I'm going to show you quickly is a classic quad stretch, okay? I recommend that you, you can do it lying down, but I recommend that you do it standing up. Now get this one right, please, because with this stretch, you really have to be focused for the two minutes that you're doing it. You have to be proactively trying to take it further. If you let your mind wander or switch off with this stretch, that'll be it. You'll, you'll completely ruin the stretch and completely waste your time. Now, I'm going to move back to the wall behind me, but so you can see me, I'll start off close. First thing I'm going to do is grab where my laces would be tied if you've got shoes on. Pull the knees together. From here, straight away, you'll feel if there is tightness, because you'll feel yourself almost starting to bow forward, or you'll feel that your hips are starting to go back a wee bit. Now, with the knees, imagine they've been glued together. Really pull that foot towards your bum, and then from here, I'll show you from the side if I can find my balance, Push the butt through, squeeze the hips, squeeze the glutes, sorry, through as if you're at the top of a glute bridge or you're locking out on a kettlebell swing. And when you do that, you should feel a good stretch running down the front of your thighs. You must be squeezing the butt, okay? I recommend you hold on to something. That's why I'm going to the wall in a minute. You must squeeze the butt through to get the stretch on, but you have to be taking it further and further and further while you're doing this stretch, okay? So it doesn't work if you switch off. So knees together, good grip of where your laces would be tied or are tied. 
then push through with that butt, squeeze the butt through while you're pulling that foot towards. The leg that's on the ground, I want you to make sure that knee is not locked out, keep it soft, okay? We don't want to be putting all that stress and weight and strain on the joint. Keep the muscles working. Push through, push through, push through. Just imagine you're at the top of a glute bridge and you're trying to pause and squeeze those glutes as high as you can. So that's why with this stretch, it only works if you're switched on and you're continually trying to take it further. If you ease those glutes off, if you let your mind wander, you've lost the stretch. You're really trying to lock those hips out, pull that foot towards the butt, keep the knees together, squeeze the glutes with all dear mighty. We do not want to feel like our lower back's going into overextension, which is again another common problem with this. We do this, okay, if you can see me now, you can see I've got a real overextended spine and leaning backwards. That's no good. And that's why, once again, I'm telling you to squeeze the butt. Because if you're squeezing the butt and pulling that foot in hard, you will not overextend that lower back. Taking it further, taking it further, taking it further. Last 15 seconds. Really go for it. Really push those hips through. Really pull that foot towards the butt. And once again, you should be feeling this sweeping up the front of your thigh, sweeping up the quads. Okay? Some people will feel it really almighty. Other people will just feel like an all right stretch. It just depends, once again, on where your mobility is at. Ease out of there. Shake out. And once again, if you've done it properly, okay, just let yourself regulate a little bit before you change. I won't come close, you know exactly what we're doing now. I need my wall for balance. So grab a hold of where the laces are tied, not the toes. Pull, pull the knees together first and foremost. From here, again, be aware of your spine. We don't want to be overextending. So if you have to, lean forward, okay? And then from here, pulling the foot in towards the butt while keeping the knees together, I'm going to squeeze those glutes through. Once again, that's going to prevent my lower back and any overextension. I find the stretch. And then I try to maintain and then develop that stretch by continually trying to pull my foot harder into my butt and squeezing my butt forward more, more, and more. The leg that's on the ground, once again, make sure that the knees are soft. Don't want to be stood there with the knee locked out. Again, putting all that weight and stress and strain on the joint. Take it further, everybody. Don't ease out of it. Take it further. This is why with this one, we don't have gravity working with us here. We have to apply the stretch. We have to keep the muscles, the glutes firing through. It's not like we can sit down and let gravity or a band pull us in this one. And once again, with this classic quad stretch, we're keeping it simple. You can do this at home pretty simply. We can start throwing in the resistance bands, etc., to change the emphasis or try to take it up a notch. But again, home friendly and this will do just fine good ease out of there everybody good so we've attacked the quads now i want you to get either if you're in your living room you've got a sofa if you've got a sofa good for you grab a cushion put it underneath your knee if you don't and you're a setup similar to mine all you need is a chair or a bench or even a wall a wall actually works better and once again if you're not sure about this stretch watch me first before you run away and start setting up because i want you if you're going to be disappeared to understand exactly what we're doing here. Okay, so I've got my mat for my knees. That's the most important part. We're going to be putting a lot of stress, sorry, a lot of pressure, a lot of weight on my knee. So you need to make sure it's not on a hard surface. Now, the purpose of my bench here is just to allow me to do exactly what I've just showed you here. Okay, so I've got this foot up behind me. I'm trying to get the knee as close to the wall as you can. Wall, chair, sofa, whatever you've got, okay? But rest assured, a wall is one of the better things to use because the problem, like you can see with my bench, is pretty damn uncomfortable and jams right into my foot at an awkward position, which doesn't let me quite get my knee as close to the wall, which is another learning point. I want you to get that knee as close to the wall as you can. It doesn't quite work or it's kind of un unproductive if you've got that shin at 45 degrees. Okay, I want that shin as close to 90 degrees as you can. Now, from here, this is once again where a beginner it's going to differ massively between someone who is either more flexible or been doing this a little while. What I want you to do is get into a lunge position. Like so, get that leg forward, 90 degree bend, shin vertical. That's how we know we've got it forward far enough. And then I'm in this full press up position type thing here. And I'm just trying to find, sorry, trying to square myself off to the floor. So I don't want to be pulled off to the side. 
So this is the start of the stretch, okay? What we're gonna be working here is the hip flexor, but you're also gonna feel the quads if they're pretty tight too. From here, I'm gonna just slowly start lifting my upper body up, and I want you to think back to the quad stretch we've just done, okay? So I'm sitting here now, lazily resting on my knee before I really get into this stretch. Most important safety point here is your spine, your lower back here, okay? Big common mistake with this one is, people don't stretch, they just try to get up vertical, and look what's happening here. I'm leaning back, I'm curving my spine back, and I'm putting a hell of a stress on my lumbar spine. This is dangerous, you're gonna hurt yourself. The purpose of this is to stretch out the hip flexor and quads. How I do that, exactly the same as the quad stretch I've just done, start pushing your hips through. Squeeze the butt, okay? So start off in this lazy position, start pushing your hips forwards, squeezing the glutes through, 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 and then start lifting yourself up by pushing the glutes through, not by leaning back, okay? And what I like to do on this one, and what I recommend is, put a hand on your stomach, round about your belly button area, put your palm, sorry, your back of your palm, back of your hand, on your lower back area, and it should feel nice and solid. You, should, you will feel, if you've got your hands there, you'll feel when you collapse that, when you go into overextension. So sometimes we don't know about it. If you start to feel your pelvis tilt back the way, and you start to feel that curling form in the lower back, that's when you know you need to ease out a wee bit and really focus on pushing through. So once again, I'm squeezing those glutes through. Imagine I'm at the lockout of a kettlebell swing or the top of a glute bridge. And again, we're trying to target this hip flexor area here, but most of us will probably feel a lot of tightness in the quads as well, but that's fine. So all you're trying to do is lock those hips out. Pretty uncomfortable stretch for a lot of people, so if you're struggling with this one, you're not, you're not alone, okay? It's, it's pretty nasty. Continually trying to take it further. Now you can see I'm kind of almost vertical, almost vertical. Beginners, you'll be here feeling a hell of a stretch, but once again, keep working on it, you're gonna get better. We're taking it further, we're taking it further, we're taking it further. Always trying to keep yourself level. So as I'm coming up, you don't wanna start feeling like you're off to this side, which a lot of us will, okay? You don't want your pelvis to feel like it's sitting on a right tilt. Try and keep your pelvis neutral, okay? Fantastic. And then I want you to slowly ease out of this one. Again, quit getting the habit of going out the same way you came in. Nice and balanced, nice and equal. If your mat's not too great and you're finding that knee real uncomfortable, just simply fold it in half, make the, make the mat a bit thicker. Right, we're gonna change sides. So again, no really movement required. Get that foot high up on your wall or bench or sofa, whatever you're using, and try to get the knee underneath the foot so our shin is pretty much vertical. From here, I'm gonna take that big, big almighty lunge step forwards until it roughly get that 90 degree bend, AKA vertical shin. Full press up position almost with the hand, trying to just square yourself off. Right, okay, setup feels all right. So now I'm just gonna come up a little bit, do a lazy start on the knee. Then I'm gonna start sitting up, pushing those hips forwards. Remember what I said about that lower back, don't let it curve. We're pushing through, pushing through, and again, the angle you start on, whether it's this, Beginners are a bit more advanced, you'll find you get a bit more range to start with. But either way, I'm pushing those hips forwards. So that's it, a lot to talk about in that stretch. Still a simple stretch, but a lot that can go wrong in it. And I want you to understand what we're trying to do. And like I say, squeeze that butt through. All I'm trying to do is lock these hips out while keeping a nice neutral spine. Once again, with this stretch, it's down to you to make sure you're taking it further, you're not easing in and out. We don't have gravity on our side so much here, so we have to apply the stretch, we have to apply the force. And that's why we're continually trying to push these hips forward. Really go for it, as in really go for it, really push those hips through Make sure you're not just giving it 50%. Really go for it, push those hips through. See how far you can get out of this. Trust me, I'm pretty uncomfortable right now, but once again, try to focus on my breathing and at least find some form of relaxation within it. Taking it further, push through the hips.
and slowly once again start easing out of that one. Oof, oof, oof. Good. Right. Stand up, shake out, get in the drink of water. Getting into the classic, the classic good old groin stretch, okay, kneeling style. Simple, simple stretch, but again, it's about getting a good setup first. I'll show you from the front how wide apart I'm trying to get my knees. The wider you get your knees, the quicker you're going to feel a stretch in this one, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm trying to get my knees nice and wide, and again, you're going to need good forage, you're going to need a good mat for these knees. From here, all I'm trying to do is get out, sort of get out, get my spine in a nice neutral position, so really think about that spine, okay? I don't want to overextend, I don't want to flex. Now I'm going to show you from the side now, because this is the most important angle, so you can see exactly what's going on with my spine. So this stretch, we do let gravity work with us. So we're trying to, like I say, get the knees nice and wide. From here, <coughs> get off the toes, okay? So if you're holding on like this, if you're looking at me in the mirror, look at my feet. I don't want the, I want my toes flat, okay? My feet flat, sorry. From here, I'm gonna begin pushing back with those hips. Don't let your spine start to curve. This is why you must be slow and take your time. Beginners to exercise, you don't quite have what I would call spinal, spinal awareness. You're not really quite sure when you're going into overextension or flexion, but if you've been exercising a while, especially when you're learning how to lift weights, you'll start to become more aware of your, the position of your spine. So try and take your time and realize that I'm pushing my hips back further and further and further with this almighty wide stance on my knees. And you'll feel it. There's no point in telling you where you should be feeling it. You're going to feel it in your groin as soon as you start pushing those hips back. But one thing you have to be conscious of is you don't start to let that pelvis tilt down towards the ground, which it will if you try to go too far too soon. So focus on your breathing. Now with the upper body, I'm in a very relaxed plank position as in there's not much weight on my arms. I want the weight to be on my knees. I want that weight to be pushing those hips down. So I recommend that you can take as much weight off your arms as you can but keep the focus of this stretch in the groin. Some people like to have their arms straight out in front, and that's fine, but sometimes what that ends up doing is bringing a stretch into the upper body, and then they start focusing on that, okay? So try to find just a nice happy medium with having your arms nice and relaxed, with feeling like there's not a lot of weight on them. Take this groin stretch as far as you can, okay? Lift the, lift the hips up. I want you to try and lift the hips up as you continue to descend further and further into this. And that will help ensure that you're not letting that uh, you're not letting those hips start to tilt towards the ground. And the reason they're tilting towards the ground is just because the tightness in your groin is pulling it that way. Again, that would be us giving into the stretch, so try not to. Real uncomfortable stretch this one, or at least you can make it so. Once again, it's about taking it further and further and further. Go for it, everybody. Give it everything. Focus on your breathing. Trying to take it further gradually, but at the same time, be sensible. No pain, just discomfort of the stretch itself. Good. Last 20 seconds. You go for it now. This is you really going for it. Lift that, move those hips up as you push the hips back. We're pushing the hips back, but at the same time, we're trying to sink the weight down towards the ground. Good. I want you to slowly start thinking about easing out of it. Equally, starting to go forwards. Get the hands back on the ground, supporting your weight. Good work. And this is one I would recommend that you stand up, shake out, crack a few squats if you like, just to start letting the blood flow again pretty damn uncomfortable stretch for a lot of people but the reason for that is a lot of us really do lack a lot of mobility in the groin and that's simply because we don't lengthen these muscles out all too often people who exercise yes you do but if we spend a lot of time sat down or not moving or not actively going into a deep squat these muscles aren't getting stretched out which is why so many people then turn up to an exercise class 
footballers, sprinters especially, they just start demanding full flexibility of the groin. They don't have it and then they pull out. So that's where a lot of people end up pulling their groin and pick that quick because they're lacking the flexibility and mobility in the first place. Or before they work out, before they start a sprint session, they're stood in the corner and going like this. Okay. Stretch out their shoulders with the worst possible stretch you can do. Anyway, no starting that rant. <laughs> right, we've done the groin. What are we going to do now? We're going to do one old favourite, okay, that might be new to you if it is, which it probably is. All I'm saying, bear with it. It's a very effective stretch. It's more of a mobility drill. What we're going to be doing is the hip capsule stretch, okay? And the hip capsule is simply the hip joint here. Okay, so it's the joint itself, so therefore don't be expecting to feel stretches of the big muscle groups in and around it. We're talking we should feel, we're trying to mobilise the actual joint itself and the muscles within it. So, make sure you're not expecting to feel anything crazy. With this, for people who have never done it before, it can feel confusing and you'll probably have that look on your face like you'd be having a laugh here, like what the hell are we trying to do? But all I'll say is, do it. Try your best to listen to me and do it properly. And when you stand up after you've done it, you should feel the difference straight away between the side you've done and the side you've not done. So it's all about a good setup. So I'm on all fours, and I want to feel like the weight's distributed evenly across all fours. We're all going to start with the right leg because it just works better if you're working with me here and listening to the explanations on the same leg. So what I want to do now is make sure my hip, sorry, my hip capsule is over my knee. So just make sure it is, because a lot of people will be held here, okay, hips away forward thinking it is. So you should feel like there's a decent bit of weight on both knees. From here, I'm going to take my left leg, I'm going to straighten it out, and I'm just going to sit it back here behind me. Rest it on the floor, but only ever so slightly rest it on the floor. I'm trying to keep as much weight on this right leg as I can, this right knee. From here, I want you to imagine a crowbar. You've got a crowbar in a door, and you're trying to prise that door open with a crowbar. This is what we're going to be doing with the hip joint now. I'm going to start pushing my hip joint out towards you on the camera while keeping all the weight on that right knee and keeping that left leg just kind of resting but hovering, resting on the ground. And when you do that, you should feel, you should feel like you're about to pop your femur, that long bone, out the joint, out the hip capsule. Okay, that's the sensation we're trying to get. Like we're trying to prise that femur out. So I'm pushing out towards you on the camera. You can't quite see that, but you can, well you probably can. Once that you feel that you've gone as far as you can and you've maintained a relaxed state and you can really feel that stretch in the hip capsule, you feel that pressure, okay, then you're ready to start moving forward. Top tip for this is make sure you're relaxed. It's hard to relax, but make sure you're relaxed. If you're not feeling it here, it's probably because you've either put too much weight on this back leg, so occasionally I recommend you lift that back leg completely off the ground just to make sure you've got all the weight on the right. Good. And also you need to have a good bit for the knees. If the knees are uncomfortable, you won't be relaxed. Now what I'm going to start doing is moving forwards. So I'm going to start locking my hips out, okay, straightening out my hips, while I continue to push and try to pop that femur out. So I'm still pushing my hips towards you on the camera. The reason we go slow on this is because if you go fast, you're going to lose that sensation in the hip joint. Okay, so I'm continuing to try and pop that femur out. And once again, if you lose it, stop. Lift that back leg up that's not on the ground. Make sure you've got all the weight on the right knee. Make sure you're relaxed. All I'm doing is go nice and slow. The more you do this, the easier you'll find it to go faster. Okay, you'll be able to go a lot faster in this. But as a beginner, once again, you're not quite sure what we're trying to do here. Once you manage to get to this point here where your hips are pretty much fully locked out, and yet again, I'm still pushing those hips, trying to pop that femur out, I'm still doing that, then you can come back up. And I want you just to keep going nice and slow. And again, right, okay, so for example, right now I've lost the sensation, and I know why, because I've started putting too much weight on this left leg of mine. So I'm going to lift it up, relax, right, it's back again, and continue. So I'm pushing the hips back, 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 back. Go all the way. Go all the way now. Working through a full range of movement with that hip joint. Once again, we're trying to mobilize as we stretch. And you can speed up if you manage to maintain that sensation of keeping yourself relaxed. You can speed this up a little bit, but only 
if you can maintain that relaxation. Good. So play around with that one. Good. And all I'm going to do is ease out slowly. And this is where I want you to stand up, move around, crack some squats. You'll feel a difference. If you've done that properly, you're going to feel very lopsided. Okay, you're going to feel almost like, I don't know, you've had two dodgy hips and you've just had one hip replacement. Okay, it's the best way to describe it. You'll feel a little bit off balance. You'll feel like this side's all of a sudden just moving a little bit better. Crack a squat, you'll probably kind of feel like you're lopsided a wee bit, favouring one side. So we've got a lot of tightness, a lot of restriction in the actual hip joint itself. Remember, these muscles can all be really flexible and mobile, but if the muscles in the joint itself are very restricted, it doesn't matter, okay? So that's why we're attacking the hip joint here. Because again, it's another area in which we find a lot of tightness. So, changing sides. And once again, if you're new to it, beginner, you've never done it before, keep with it, keep practicing it. The more you do it, the more you'll get out of it. But the first time you do it, it just feels a bit weird. Right, again, I'm on all fours, okay? Now I'm going to be taking that right leg back. So all the weight is now on my left. And I'm just going to make sure this pelvis is sitting right above my knee. So you'll feel it if it is, because you'll feel like that's where the most weight's on your knee. From here, once again, I'm going to start pushing. Pushing, just slowly, gradually pushing a pelvis towards you on the camera. So out to the outside. <sighs> Trying to pry and pop the femur out of the joint. Okay, so if you think about that, just try and pop it out of the joint. Once you achieve a good stretch, you feel you're as far as you can possibly go. I'm going to hang out there for a few seconds just to let everybody catch up. Still feeling a good stretch, still trying to take it forward. Once I've achieved that, that's when I'm going to start just slowly lowering my hips towards the ground. And at any point, you lose that relaxed stretch sensation within the hip joint. That's when you stop. Lift the knee off the floor, make sure you've got all the weight on it, make sure you're truly relaxed. Right, I've got it back, and then continue. That's the only difference between, I would say, someone who's done it a few times and understands it and someone who's not, is someone who's done it a few times is able to move and maintain that relaxed state and maintain where the stretch should be. But a beginner, you'll find that you're constantly stopping, having to relax again, having to make sure all the weight is on that, on that knee that you're using. So straight away, Again, go as slow as you need to to maintain, but we're trying to go and lock those hips out. But if you're able to, you've been doing that a wee while, and it's not new to you, just work through that full range of movement. As long as you're trying to push that femur out of the joint, out away from you, pop it out of the joint, so to speak, and you're keeping relaxed, work through that full range of movement, go all the way back, work that joint, and it's full range of movement. the same speed as me. We're all done off a field there. There's no point watching me. Good. Good. Once again, finish up there or feel free to hit the pause button and practice a wee bit more. But get up, test and adjust. Remember, test and adjust everything you do. You might just find that one has helped make things feel a lot better feel like you're moving a lot better, in which case I would say to you, you need to do it more, okay? But definitely with that one, it's one of the ones that when you're doing it, you're not quite sure what the heck you're trying to do. You don't really know if it's benefiting you, but then you stand up and you're like, oh, ready to hit the dance floor. Right, we're getting into another group. We're getting in, oof, it's got many names. It's got many names in the world of yoga, etc. But here, I just call it the enhanced glute stretch, which it is to some degree. It's a glute stretch, but not a good old classic glute stretch like this. We're really getting the weight up on top of it. So with this one, again, it's about setup. It's pretty uncomfortable for many people. Realize that if you struggle with it, keep practicing it, you're gonna get better, okay? Legs out at 90 degrees in front of you. The mat here is for my knee, which will make sense in a minute. I'm gonna be getting up into what would be a probably a full press up position. Now this front leg, we're trying to maintain the position, this 90 degree bend on this front leg. How we do that, grab a hold, and I mean grab a hold of your foot, pin it to the floor, and then as you get up on this stretch, I recommend that you put, once you get up, you'll see what I mean in a minute, you put your hand in front of your knee, because that's going to stop the knee pushing forward. 
Because what's going to happen is one or two things. The knee's either going to start pushing forward or this foot's going to start sliding back because of tightness. You're going to get in the position and think you're really good at it. Oh, I'm not really feeling a stretch, but look at the great position I'm in. It's because your foot's fallen out of that position, okay? So there we are. Out. Pin it. Get up. As soon as you can, get that foot in front of the knee. Maintain, maintain this position we're in here. Now, as you can see, this leg is going to lay out here, okay? It's 45 degrees to the body. That's because of tightness here. Priority one's getting that knee to the floor, okay? Get the knee on the floor, and that's why this leg's out there. Then I'm going to start bringing this leg in, and you can see that foot starting to slide, so I'm going to pin it. Bring the, bring the back leg in. Try and square myself off to the ground, to you on the camera. Square myself off to the front and the ground. And then start going for it. Okay, so I'm trying to push that back leg back behind me. It is on the floor, it is fully resting. <sighs> My pelvis, I'm trying to have it pointing, facing towards the ground. Where you feel this stretch? Once again, the hip joint. You're going to feel it in the hip joint. Okay, so there's a lot of restriction in the hip joint, which is going to be the glutes also. So this is a glute stretch. This is a good stretch for the glutes. But it might take a wee bit of time before you actually feel it in the glutes because everything else is so restricted. What you may also find is if your groin's that tight, you'll feel it in the groin. And then that back leg, you'll feel it in the groin slash into the hip flexor as well. So there's a lot of places you potentially might feel this stretch if there's a lot of restricted tissue involved. So that's why it's a good stretch. It's a damn good stretch. Okay, we're trying to maintain this position of the knee. Constantly just trying to get in a better position. Understand that if you are pretty damn tight, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be pretty. But keep getting practice in. Keep practicing, practicing, practicing. And you're going to get better. Okay? There's always going to be certain movements that you struggle with. If you're able to, get down onto the knees. You're going to let yourself get more weight onto that leg. But once again, if you go down onto those elbows and suddenly you start shaking like hell and you're tensing up and tightening it, that's no good, okay? That's not a good stretch. So either way, you're up like before or you're down and just trying to get as much weight down onto those hips as you can. Stretching out, stretching out, stretching out. Some people find this not too bad, but most people find that one pretty, pretty awful, pretty restrictive. So go for it. Change legs when you're ready. Or if things are feeling that bad, change. Eh, don't change. Hold it a bit longer, okay? So I'm changing sides once again. I would, I would definitely say, once again, this is a tough stretch. A lot of people find it tough, and therefore a lot of people don't do it. If you find this one tough, get it done more. Okay, and I'm telling you now, I find this tough, and you can probably see that I'm starting to break a sweat. Next degree bend, priority number one. Pin the foot, get up, okay, get that hand in front and bring that knee back down. So the foot is wedged, okay, that leg is not breaking from that position, and now I'm going to try and wiggle myself across, square myself up, boom, I'm not on top of it. I'm feeling the stretch, I'm feeling it in my glutes, I'm feeling it towards my hip joint. But if it's that tight, you're going to need to really try and relax. That's a big ask sometimes in this position. <sighs> yeah, get that knee down. Good. Get the knee down. And remember, if you can't get the knee down, move this foot further away. Move it from behind you. Out. Good. Try and keep this leg towards Okay, the difference being if you're a bit more flexible, this part of your leg will be more true to 90 degrees, where you can see I'm tight, so this part of my leg is more at 45 degrees. You get me? Good. I see a lot of confused looks. It's a tough stretch. It's a tough stretch, but it's one that's easy to do wrong. It's one that's easy to hold in a position where you think, oh, I'm quite good at this, but in actual fact, you do it wrong. As long as you're feeling the stretch predominantly, on this hip, just, you're doing it well. There's no point trying to uh, try to achieve a perfect position, a perfect setup if it's that tight. That'll come as you get better, if you get better. Good, right, once again, see if you that bad boy. Stand up, shake out, get a drink. We're nearly there. Right. Spending a lot of time around the hip area because there's a lot of muscle groups feeding in 
We're getting more time on the lower body and hips because those are the areas in which most people lack, not quite so much in the upper body today because, like I say, we're working on those areas that need an overhaul, especially with a feel that you are probably going to be struggling with as a beginner or someone who's never really done a lot of this before or for a while. Back into this, I want you to think back to our hamstring stretch. Remember that, we've never done it too long ago. From here, pay attention. Don't just go straight into it. Set up for the perfect hamstring stretch, okay? And then what I want you to do, so I'm doing my right leg first, probably a good idea if you do yours too. I'm gonna get my leg and let it go across my body. Now, pay attention, look here. I'm keeping it at 90 degrees or the point in which I feel max stretch, which might be here for a beginner. I'm keeping it and maintaining it at that angle all the way until my foot hits the floor. Now what I want you to do, so I've got my right leg here, I'm going to take my left hand and pull that band as tight as I can. From here, with my right hand, so right leg, right hand comes across, like so, okay? Happy with that. Now this position usually goes wrong because people let the knee bend or they let a lot of slack into the band to make it easier for them. If you do this properly, you're going to feel it running from the hips into maybe a bit of the hamstrings, but predominantly the hips and glutes. You're going to feel it sweeping into the lower back. You're going to feel it into the obliques, the chest, the shoulders. Boom, five steps, you name it. This is a damn good stretch for the lower back, believe it or not. Okay, so we could just stretch the lower back, but remember what I say a lot of the time, tightness in the lower back, stiffness in the lower back isn't just because the lower back is stiff. It's because the muscles in and around it that function with it are also tight. So with this stretch, we're hitting it all, okay? We're getting the glutes, we're getting the lower back, getting the obliques, getting the chest, getting the shoulders. Okay, once again, if you're pretty damn tight, you're not going to have a perfect position. So you're going to struggle to get right round. You're going to struggle. So get to a point where you're struggling and try to continue forward. If you're on the floor like I am, you feel like you've got that shoulder joint on the floor and it's feeling okay, I want you to make sure your knee's really locked out and lift that leg a bit higher. Lift that leg a bit higher to enhance the stretch. Remember, boom, breathe out, relax. Make sure your muscles are relaxed, as uncomfortable as this might be for some people. We're trying to let gravity sink us into the ground. We're trying to let all our muscles relax while holding this position. It's a very good stretch for targeting multiple muscle groups and it's helping, really helping that lower back mobility and flexibility as well. Well, we've got a bit of a body. Try and take it further and further and further. Really make sure you've got a decent pull on that band too. Decent bit of pull, best you can with one arm. Good. And from this, I'm going to squeeze out, let go of the band, and just slowly roll back over onto your back. Once again, sit up, move around. How does that feel? Okay. So, not an isolated stretch for the lower back, but hitting the muscle groups. Sorry, targeting the muscle groups in and around the lower back in an effort to improve the flexibility in your lower back, but also it will help you identify when you do this, if you feel a specific area tight and you find that your lower back and hips are pretty tight, more specifically around the lower back area, it's giving you an indication as to where the problem is. If the whole area, everything about this stretch is just uncomfortable and hurts, then of course you need to work on it more. Locked out, across. Oh. So straight away, go to that side, definitely worth. Leg straight, knee locked out, feeling the stretch in here, okay? So I've established the stretch in my lower body, in at my hips, in at my hamstrings and glutes before I've even twisted. From here, I'm going to get a good grip of that band. Chest proud, rotate away. Beginners, you're going to get to about here and not be able to go any further, that's fine. As long as you're keeping good form, good posture, and you're trying to take it further, that's good. But everybody else, I want you to strive to get that shoulder joint on the ground and find a state of relaxation within the discomfort. We must keep these muscles relaxed, everybody. I cannot emphasize it enough. We do that by focusing on your breathing. It gives you something to take the mind off, but also the breathing itself is gonna help relax the muscle tissue. Keep the knee locked out. If at any point you feel you could go a wee bit further, just lift that leg a wee bit higher. Think about the hips. Make them feel heavy, sinking into the ground, the gravity is pulling us down, we're just completely relaxing everything. That's it. 
working on it, I'm trying to further, I'm trying to improve, I'm trying to relax more. I mean, I'm pretty damn uncomfortable, so don't let that be an excuse to let me quit on it, okay? Just release the stress off the band, slowly start bringing yourself back around, just be careful, okay? You hold a very restricted position, just be careful when you're coming in and out of it. Right. So, to summarise today's class, we're going to finish with one, one upper body movement. And it's an important one, and one, again, that most people are really lacking range in, okay? And it's in this area here, in at the upper back, in at the lats, we've got a lot of tightness. We'll target this more in the specific upper body work, but at the same time, we've done it on the overhead overhaul. Okay, we've done a lot on that, the overhead overhaul, and also the bench press overhaul we've done. Or you will be doing a lot more upper body work. But today, to tie in nicely and finish off the full body class, we're going to target those upper upper back muscles, tying into the armpit area. And what you will need is either a bench, a coffee table, a chair, a wall, a raised platform is all you're going to need. Decent mat, move your mat quite far away from it to your knees. Elbows, again, simple stretch this one. Elbows onto the ledge. Move the knees back and just simply put the hands behind the knee, behind the knee, put the hands behind your, your, oh my word, put your hands behind your head there, fully lengthen out those triceps. Again, beginners, you'll find you're up here, more advanced, you'll start to feel yourself real sink towards the ground. So you're trying to get the knees quite far away from the bench, and from that, you're going to feel a lot more weight on your arms, which is where we want it. So we're stretching out. Those lats, those latissimus dorsi, the big upper back muscles that are feeding in, in and around your armpit area, that's where we're going to feel this predominantly. When we're doing this, try to avoid putting your back into overextension. Try to keep that nice neutral spine. We want all the weight pushing down through these elbows, but don't be putting too much stress on your lower back by putting it into overextension. Just try to relax. And again, as time goes on with this one and you relax more and more, gravity takes hold, you can hold the stretch longer. It does get pretty uncomfortable. Try to keep the shoulder blades together, but relaxed. And we're just hanging out. Hanging out in this position. Don't rest your head on the bench. Don't rest your head on your coffee table. You defeat the purpose here. That weight of your head is helping enhance this stretch, so don't rest it. That's why we're doing it in a raised platform. So again, get a lot of tightness, a lot of tightness. Discomfort, yes, pain, no. Just be aware, pins and needles, etc. You might start to get them in the stretches like this to really start restricting the blood flow. So if you do start to feel that sensation, just ease out slightly, let the blood back in. Good, but we're nearly done anyway. We want you to slowly ease out of it, equally coming back up out of it. Careful not to put too much stress on one shoulder joint. Good. And shake that out. Okay. Again, there's so much more we could do to the upper body, but today is about targeting those big muscle groups that most people have a lot of tightness in regularly. Okay, whether you're inactive or whether you are active, you're still going to experience a lot of stiffness and tightness, especially if you're active and you're pushing your body hard. You're going to feel tight, you're going to feel sore. Thank you very much. That's flexibility for you. Once again, extract out of that the things you found really difficult. You might have found the whole session difficult, in which case just keep doing it little and often. But there might be key areas that you really struggle with. Get them, do them, add them into your day randomly, and you'll get better pretty damn quickly. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And get it done. And you'll get it done again. And then again. <laughs>